Let's go! Let's go! That sounded like something growling. That didn't sound like a javelina. There's lots of country out here. You know, and I don't feel right unless I'm out riding with my hounds. Sometimes there just isn't enough time to go very far. But this is a place that's only about 20 minutes from the house. It's desolate, dry, and doesn't really hold a lot of game. But it's easy to get around in. And during the weekdays, you usually don't have to worry about bumping into anyone. I've been coming out here for over 35 years. It's kind of a special place for me and brings back lots of old memories. I'm Brett. I'm a houndsman, a mule rider, and a lion hunter. Most of the time I'm out by myself, alone, just with my hounds, riding my mule Big Agnes, and sometimes with my pack mule, Ruthless Ruth. I believe this is the place. You see, My oldest daughter, I think, is 43 years old. <laughs> and when she was about six or seven years old, I brought her right up here. With a bunch of dogs. Not a bunch of dogs. I probably had four or five of those Airedales. Maybe not even that many. But I brought her up here because I told her we're lion hunting. I remember, and she, and she, you know, she's just a little kid, she peed her pants. Let's go ride, man, let's ride. Don't forget, skittle pads. I really, really like them. Onward and upward. That's the watchword, huh, guys? <laughs> Let's go, man. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> when I first got my my first whole set of hounds, there's five of them. I take them out, and I had the I had the old beep beep collars, telemetry. I thought, wow, how in the world does anybody keep track of so many dogs? <laughs> it's a it's a learned it's a learned skill. I can go now, I got 13 hound dogs out here now. And if I'm missing one for a little while. Or if I just get that little feeling, that intuition, then I check, see which one I'm missing. I can usually tell just by a glance. Skills, buddy, skills. <laughs> These skills just don't pay very much. I bet it's already 75 degrees. I'm getting a late start. I'm gonna ride. I think, I think that canyon right up there, you turn. I should have brought a, I got a little game camera I'd like to put up there. Cause it's a, there's a Tanaka up there that holds water all the time. And this is kind of a, I don't know that I would call it a travel route, but it's kind of a route that kind of ties the country together. I have found lion tracks up and down this big draw before. Long, long time ago. But yeah, I'll go right over that, into that next canyon, then back up. And then I can circle back around. It's getting hot, dogs are starting to hunt shade. So we worked our way up this big old sandy draw. And pretty soon, sure enough, we find a lion track. Probably be a little more diligent about finding a track. 
but Booger and them are way up here. I want to get to them. Typical of this country, you go for a ways and you can't pick it up anymore. So then you got to move the dogs around, keep looking, see if you can look at the country and figure out which way that lion's going. Booger's barking on it. Al's barking on it. Uno's barking on it. But they can't stitch it together. It's kind of skippy. I don't know. Every now and then, I, you know, I'm not going to put it above Booger to, to start trash. But that sounded like something growling. That didn't sound like a javelina. Get back! Get back! Get back! Get back! What is it? Just had one hell of a javelina race. I'm pretty sure that's what that is inside that little cape hole. Oh yeah, I see his nose. Ha! Get back, you bunch of trashy bastards. Stinking stink pigs. Oh well. Get out of here, you bunch of trashy pukes. Let's go. They had jumped them out there earlier. There's a bunch of them. I hate those things. So I rode on. We had started a lion track. There was no doubt about that. We just happened to trail into those javelinas and jumped on I, I, you know, I got a bunch of young dogs with me. Anyway, we came to this beautiful canyon. That's one of the things about following these dogs is you end up places you normally wouldn't ride to. Forget which way the Tanaka is. That's a pretty cool canyon. Needs to be a camera right here. I, this is not the same place I was thinking about. What are you looking at, Agnes? This is a different place. But it's perfect. Let me get off Agnes for a minute. You can get your own private pool, Timmy. to find these spots like this in the desert. An oasis in the desert, look at that. It's nice, nice, nice. Well, they ran him good. I wish I'd had the camera on. That little one of them just ran, I mean, right next to me. I didn't have time. I was scared Agnes might throw a fit, but ah, she did it. She's all right. So we circled around, got back up on top. We're right in between these canyons that held water. These little pools like this, we call Tanakas. I don't know where, I think that's an Indian word. But anyway, it's a really good area. And we had trailed a lion to this spot. Those javelina just kind of messed up our track. So it was my job to figure out where that lion went and try to get the hounds back on him. I gotta wait for a fat lorry. See that other Tanaka is right over there that holds water. This is such a good area. I mean, it's still just the nasty old desert, but it's good for the nasty old desert. Come on, Larry.
they're all gone and only one of them knows what they're chasing. And it was just a little old cottontail rabbit. They are fresh. I got some that are still trailing it. Oh my! Give me about five days out here with the same dogs making circles. They won't waste their energy on something like that. They're just fresh now. Man, look at this place. I like it. I want to camp right there. Look at Booger. He says, I ain't chasing no dead, dumb cottontail rabbits. This would be a good place to hide out if you had to hide out. Still chasing something over there. Ah. They've been cooped up for too long. Me too. That's that dog. He's trailing that. That's that running dog, Bosco. He's trailing that rabbit up the side of that mountain. Pretty sure that's a lion. I like the way they started it, but they can't move it off that little hill. But I bet if they're smelling it up there, as strong as they are right there, he's probably down in this canyon. Probably down in that canyon somewhere. And that happens to be the way we're going. I bet it's 85 degrees or maybe 90 right now. They're still trying to trail it. They trailed right down to this little spot. Ideally that lion went straight down this canyon and that happens to be the way we have to go, or we need to go, or we should go. All right, here we go. Good dogs, where'd he go, where'd he go? The lion scrape right there. It's kind of messed up now, but that dang sure was a lion scrape. He's going down this canyon, I think. We get down the canyon, they should be able to bark on it. They opened up here a little bit. A few of them did. There we go, there we go. Leave it to old fat pee. I, man, I really don't think we should be that far behind this lion. I don't know. Where's Booger? Alan Booger. We'll see. Even Jack's opening it up. moving down through here now. I used to have used to have a camera right there. I pulled it out. I never got a picture of a lion. I thought it was a good place. There's another scrape right there. Look at that. Another scrape right there. 
I always forget to say that a scrape or a scratch is where a tom lion pulls back with his back feet and then he urinates or squirts on it and that marks his territory. It's also a good indication of the direction he's going. Booger and them are moving. These other dogs kind of laid up. They lost him right here. He might have went out up the side there. And it's hot. Right through there is a lot of lot of brush and a lot of protection. And it's not really exposed to the elements that bad. They could really smoke it through there. Then we get back in this open, kind of sunshiny, less foliage, less less, you know, plants and stuff. It doesn't hold scent as well. I still think he kept moving down this canyon. I don't think he climbed out here. That canyon box is in. I have to go up and around, follow this little four-wheeler road. But I didn't see any tracks and I never got any barks back there further. I'm not sure that line might've cut across, came up and out. But I'll bring some more dogs back tomorrow and I'll cut through the country and I'll get a lot earlier start. But I would imagine is that lion somehow is going up to those big mountains right there. No shade around here. It was a good day. So I got up early the next morning with high expectations. I thought, man, I know where that lion's going. So I headed out with an idea of where I thought that lion was going. It lined up perfect from where I had trailed the day before. Out here in this desert, you gotta help these hounds. Look at the country and use past experiences to try and guess which way that lion is going. I was up there the other day, yesterday, and I came down that canyon all the way and that the track didn't keep going. I figured it cut across. I seen the scrapes and I figured he cut across this way. And I think he was going to the big mountains up there. Just a guess, but it seemed like, and it seemed like he was going somewhere. Now I get right about the right spot here and I'm getting some barks. Booger is opening up, barking on, on something. He's not really wanting to grind on it, but he is uh, opening up on it. They haven't really started trailing or anything, but they're still looking, there he is. Oh, oh. I'll give him a little bit to see if he can get anything figured out in here. And what gets you more than anything is time. If you're not caught up by 10 or 10.30, this time of year at least, you won't ever catch up. Just gets too hot too early.
think he came out of those hills. Because that's where I was trailing, back off over there. Came out and came right down through here. And I'll bet you he went across. And for some reason, there's just a lot of scent right here. He left a lot of scent. Sure would like to see his track. That might be it right there. That looks like it's going that way. Oh, there we go, there we go. That makes sense to me. Come off right through here and go down. If we're a day behind, it'll be spotty down here in this bottom. Maybe when we get up in the rock, or up in a good rocky arroyo, that scent will be holding a lot better. We will see. There they go. Maybe they're gonna go on down and catch him, huh? Look at old Agnes. What a good meal. and they lost it. I think I best circle that way back and around and then come on the other side of this round mountain and back around into this arroyo because it curves around there. I've had tracks going up this before. So, but I've also had tracks going up the main canyon. Just gotta look, see what we can figure out gonna get hot running out of coolness that's for sure but I did get him a drink of water over there at the tank so gotta see what happens nothing Booger opened up over there, but nope. There we go. There's Booger again. See that sucker went the way, the way I said. But the trick will be if he circles around up through here. If he keeps going up this arroyo, or if he uh. If he curls back and goes back up into those hills. If he does, we're kind of... Kind of screwed, really. Because I don't have another day. But I still got a few more hours today. We'll see. So I kept cutting through the country checking every likely spot where I think that lion might have traveled. I'd get a bark here and a bark there. I found some tracks. Just seemed like he was everywhere and had been everywhere in there. That's old jazz right there. One more spot to check. A, sorry, we got one more spot to check. It's a little too hot. I don't think we could trail him up, but it'd be interesting to see if he came up this canyon. I'll put some pictures in right here. 
this canyon we had a we had a camera a buddy of mine had a camera in here and uh, I'll show you some of the pictures he got so I know lions travel up through here but I don't know about today or yesterday we'll see yep and sure enough I found the track where he had headed up into the big mountains but it was already late and we were going backwards on him but the dogs were trailing I've seen that track right down here it was a pretty good track too Let's see if I can find it again my mule stepped over it Telling you that was him. Uh -oh. Lordy, lordy. And we, I mean, they're trailing him backwards now. That's that lion track. He came just the way I thought he should have came. But I <laughs> made another mistake this morning. Oh, well. That's the way it goes. You know though, no matter what, at the end of the day, though just being out, being able to get out and ride for miles and miles, follow these hounds, no fence, no trespassing signs, and to be able to cut a lion track, have the hounds work it. If you catch it, that's gravy. It's, 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 it's great. If not, it was still worthwhile for all the other things you get to experience. All in all, it was a good couple of days and like an old man told me one time, sometimes chicken, sometimes feathers. Let's see what the damage is. 8.44 miles. Was out four hours and 12 minutes. Moving average was 2.9 miles an hour. Elevation 4,224 feet. And it's 11.30 right now and we were stopped for one hour and 20 minutes. It was a good day. <laughs>